Okay, this is the uh, BS300i, regular ink, there's that thing. Uh, it's the same as the other VS, you know, 54i, 60, I don't know whichever ones they made. This is the 30 inch one. We don't have room for a bigger one. Um, this one's already taken apart, but this front thing comes off easy with these little knobs. Everybody knows how to take that off. This back part here has got to come off. That thing, it comes around here to the back. And there are a few screws. You have to take off these, uh, the famous, uh, see the pile of uh, rolling screws there. All those little screws. Number two screwdriver, like brand new shape or go buy a new one. Um, machine off. No power. Turn it off, even maybe even unplug it if you have to. Okay, in order to, uh, in, in order to pull ink, you, you, I mean, you, I wouldn't try and pull those off. I think I'd pull it through the, through the damper, but you got to get the damper out of there. So the first thing you do is you go into the, um, service menu, you set the choke, uh, that'll keep ink from flowing out of here. So once you do that, then you turn it off because once it's set, it's set. So you turn the machine back off again after you set the choke. Uh, these tops come off, squeeze them front and back, straight up, easy. Pull them off, stick them in a plastic bag. If you're not sure where they go, mark them with a piece of tape. All of these have got to come off because there's a clip that goes on the top here that holds them on. And if you look... Down, let's see if I can oh, put my light in the way. It makes it easy. All right. See that tag there? That's the head rank. Right below that is a clip. And you pry the bottom of the clip out. And uh, you'll hear it snap. And I don't mean pry it, break it off. I mean a little screwdriver and a little bit of pressure. And you have to do it on both sides. And so if you can't get down in there, you might have to pull these ribbon cables off. But for the love of God, mark them. You know, that's not a very good two, is it? But one, two, and then these are three and four. You might not have to take them all off, but at least take off enough to get down inside there. This top part, the plastic, it'll lift right off. These are all in a plastic bag. All of this stuff, you already have covered that with uh, cloths to keep from ink from getting on it. Um, so then you're left with... Uh, the dampers, here they are. The top part's wide. This is the part that goes down inside. It's narrow. That's where you draw from. So, say you were going to work on the yellow. I would pull uh, the yellow cartridge out of here. And then I would put the uh, cleaning cartridge in there. Um... And then snap the top back on here with the color. Then, with the thing aside, you know, this kind of little tricky thing. You got, you got to go back to the machine. You got to go back into the service mode and release the choke. Turn it off. Because if the choke is on, you're not going to be able to... Now, the, the trouble is... Um, you know, you want to maybe have somebody helping you, holding these things up in here. You don't want ink coming out of these. And for the for the love of God, don't press them in the center. Because that will release ink. Only handle them from the side. Right? So it's hooked on there with that black cap, the correct one on the correct side. And then you use um, a little very nice syringe that I got from Ernie. I don't know where you get them. But uh, it's a, you pull it, you gently put that into the lower side. And if you've got the clear in there, you pull it until you see the cleaning fluid. And then once you see the cleaning fluid, you've flushed it all out. You go ahead and pull the cleaning fluid uh, you know, out of there and you stick it back in where the yellow was. And then you, uh, then you again, you continue to... You continue to pull, and you're going to pull cleaning fluid out, and then, then it's all of a sudden it's going to turn nice and dark and yellow, and you, so it's clean. And you do that for any other colors you're worried about. But, I mean, 
handling these things once they're out of there, especially when you've uh, released the choke, um, is uh, fraught with danger because it's, I mean, you got, got to wear gloves anyway. Wear uh, nitrile gloves or something or something that you can work easily, not a, not a poorly fitting plastic glove. Find a glove that fits your hand if you have to go down and buy a box of them. If you have small hands, get small gloves. Because it's impossible to work on these things if you don't have a good hand. Um, the glove will be all folded around. Anyway, when you put them that back together, you got to press them. This is the inside. Here's the... I, re, I just replaced the head. That's why this is all taken apart. And uh, in case you're interested, I mean, I got a cover on this. That's what the head looks like. It's shiny. Look at that. Anyway, um, so I replaced the head on this, and that's why uh, I took it all apart. That's what it looks like down inside there. Those, I guess they refer to this as the manifold. Um, that's where the narrow, you can't put these together backwards. They don't fit. It's a small side, no wide side. Wide side on the top, small side on the bottom. You gently put them down in there back over those things. Now, you, you might get in there with a little swab and carefully clean it up, but eh, you don't want to, you know, you'll be cross-contaminating the ink and everything else. So, you know, just be real careful. As long as it's reasonably clean, you should be okay. Um, when these go back in, they have to go in the, the, the same way they went before. Uh, I guess you can go back in here and set the choke off. You know, you got to turn the machine back on. Of course, if you took these off, you got to plug them back in every time you turn the machine on or off. So, anyway, uh, you know, you put the you put the dampers back in there, and then you got to slide this uh, case back over top. And they might not fit exactly. They might you might have to jigger them back and forth a little bit, but you can line them up and carefully snap this into place then when once you do that you um uh you know go back into the service mode uh release the choke and go ahead and try and print it um see what happens but as far as getting it apart it, you know it's not too hard you just take the front off you take the back off you know this over the top and then this plastic thing is all held on with a bunch of screws a couple of them, you're gonna have to uh, you're gonna have to separate the uh, the carriage, get that out of the way, because you got some screws that go sideways. So you you know you got to kind of go in from this angle, you know. You have to go in that way, and then uh, you've got a couple other ones that go in this way so you slide the carriage over here these two on the back you can't get them unless it's over here then once you of course once you get that you can uh you know remarry these and then carefully slide it back to the park position as you can see i'm getting close if you listen and that click means it's locked then you just put it, you know, you put it back together the opposite way you took it apart. I don't know. It's, you can get a list. Ernie's got a, a he'll give you a list probably of, of the order of procedure. Or I think I've got one someplace. Um, to make sure, because once you've got it all back together, you have to go back in here into the service panel and release the choke so that the ink can flow. So, is it hard? No. Is it complicated? Well, it's not really complicated. It's just specific. You have to do things in a specific order. And uh, uh, so the, I keep the list right at hand. I can't. I don't do it by memory. I'm not a tech guy. You know, some guys do this every day. They don't have to worry about it. I've got it written down. I print out. I go to the. Uh, I get the service manuals and I print out. These things, you know, this is printouts. 
you know. So, I mean, they're useful to be able to, uh, to do this stuff. And I just take my time. I mean, not in a rush. I'm not going to... To tell you the truth, I think it took us a half an hour to change the head. So that was no big deal. But I wasn't in a rush, and I, I waited until I had um, a couple of, at least two or three hours of a uh, block of time that I didn't have to do anything else. And I had somebody helping me. I had somebody beside me uh, watching what I'm doing, helping me reading directions, hanging on to these things because they flop all over the place. When you unplug them and there, there's going to be ink going everywhere. If you can do it, you know. But uh, then you run a test. Uh, before I put it all back together, personally, I don't, I do this. Take this thing there. It's a swab. <clears throat> there. Don't do that. <clears throat> Never do that. Um. But I don't want to take the thing back apart again. I'm too lazy. So I do that and I run a test. Make sure it's running okay. And once I'm running okay, then <clears throat> I can take this, uh, take that out and turn the machine back off and put it back together. And then uh, that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm putting this one together. And uh, I'm putting this one together too. This is a little different. That's a head... That head there is a little different. It's a little simpler, but again, I had to draw a uh, cleaning, black cleaning solution uh, through the line to make sure. And uh, just, there's a lot more room in this one than that one, but uh, it's a nice, uh, it's a nice printer, actually. It works beautiful, but it's uh, guys coming to pick it up uh, Saturday. So I'll be happy to get rid of that and use the money to pay for this print head. Well, actually, I'm using the money to pay for this. I used the money from the BM20 to pay for the print head. And uh, so that's the way I did it. I don't know. Probably left something out. Somebody will correct me if I did. Right? Okay. <clears throat>